Hi, you guys. Welcome back to First Impression Friday, where I review an entire sewing pattern collection. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay. Welcome. I am so glad you found me. Be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below, introducing yourself so that I can give you a formal welcome. Today, we are going to be reviewing Half Moon Atelier. I have heard of them before. Um, and I'm excited to take a look at their entire collection. Uh, taking a look at the little about section here, this is Megan Half Moon. Um, I half expected Half Moon to be just sort of some, you know, ethereal type of cute name for a sewing pattern, but no, it's her last name. And um, she is very, very big on basics, um, sustainability, uh, both in, you know, uh, not contributing to fast fashion, but also in the fabrics that we use to sew the garments at home. Very ethical, organic, um, fair trade, you know, all of those kind of keywords. She is living the life. Um, she kind of believes that less is more and that if you have more basics, you get more out of your wardrobe, so on and so forth. So that's what I'm expecting from this collection. Um, very basic, buildable type of patterns. Um, first things first, we have her Half Moon 101 jeans, uh, around $16, not around, it, it is exactly $16, and all right, it says reminiscent of iconic classic, the Half Moon 101 jeans are a lower rise straight leg and designed for non-stretch denim, designed to be snug around the hips and upper thighs, the Half Moon 101s will curve nicely around your waist and hug your hips before straightening out from just above the knee toward the ankle. There's an option for a zipper or concealed button fly and the instructions will walk you through flat felling the seams to create a simple look with truly individual fit. Pattern is drafted for a 5'6 female with full hip ranging from 33 and 3 quarter inches up to 67. I don't know that it gets much more inclusive than that, right? I don't think we see 67 inch hips very often at all, even among the pattern designers who claim to be, you know, uh, fully size inclusive. Um, I think maybe 61, 62 is about the highest I recall seeing. So a 67, that's, that's incredible. Um, step-by-step -step instructions, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we know all that already. General info, da, da, da. It comes in print at home, AO and copy shop files are included. Um, okay, you can layer your sizes. Uh, 18 sizes, approximately a US zero to 36 women's. Uh, they do not follow standard sizing charts, but newer patterns, including the 101 jeans, range again from the 33 and three quarters to 67 inches numbered one to 18 but correspond to these sizes so that's just sort of like explaining to the newbie sewer um how sewing pattern sizes and ready to wear sizes are very different um okay so fabric recommendations non-stretch denim 10 to, 9 to 10 ounces denim twill fabric uh the straight side seems to make this pattern perfect for selvage denim. If you're not familiar, selvage denim, gosh, how do I even explain this? I really don't know a lot about it now that I'm thinking about it, other than it has that little red thread going through the selvage itself. Uh, maybe someone out there who's a little bit more fabric savvy can explain the uniqueness and why selvage denim is so ideal for um, jeans. Um, then there's a lining. I think this is for your pocket bags. Uh, oh yeah, pocket bags, fly shield, and waist bag, waistband lining. And then you'll need a jeans zipper, jeans buttons, midweight interfacing, thread and top stitching thread, rivets, and jeans machine needles. Yeah, difficulty, she's calling it intermediate. Um, that's, that's bold. I would call it, you know, more close to advanced than intermediate. But maybe it's just like more tedious than difficult. So I don't know, maybe she's right. Um, and then she has all these blog posts that you can check out too. Um, the jeans on different bodies, fabric, hardware, and styling inspiration, and a sew along for tips and tricks. So lots of great um, supplemental kind of information there. This does not get bigger. And as I, you know, mouse over it, it just moves the photo. So this is all we got. Um, this is a, looks like a back view where you can see 
the kind of, well, really you can see the straight leggedness of it all. Um, you can see pocket placement, which is nice. We've got this photo here where you can see some of the details. I mean, they look pretty profesh to me. These black ones are sort of hard to see. This is an example of what the instructions look like. Um, here is the yellow version again. Certainly some issues here in constructing this fly. We don't ever want to see the zipper and all of these wrinkles are pulling. Maybe there needed to be some sort of full belly adjustment. Um, there's a size chart that we already talked about. Here is another cute version with a little frayed hem. Right, got great details with the yoke in the waistband, belt carriers. Pocket placement is something else I look for in jeans. I like how this one is higher toward the center and then it kind of drops down subtly toward the outer thigh. Um, that's good. And I think that the, the space between them is also nice. And they're not too high, not too low. Now this is, remember, she said a low rise. So um, that's something to keep in mind too, if that's something that you like. Here are the back of the yellow ones again. Here are the gray ones again. Yellow from the side. And then the blue jeans from the back. All right, so not you know, the most thorough detailed photos, but they are really beautiful, I guess. And then here's our line drawing. Yeah, I guess the only thing I wish that, that I think is missing from these photos is truly what the low rise means. Like how low rise are we talking? This is probably the closest photo we have of showing. It looks like it's sitting kind of at her high hip, right? That won't work for me and my body type, but um, but it, that's what I'm getting from this kind of like a high hip situation. So those are her jeans. There's lots of great indie jeans out there. Um, so she's just thrown her hat in the ring with this one. Now we have the strand dress, 14 bucks. This design was inspired by simple summer daydreaming by vivid memories of long, hot summer days. The romantic narrative of dancing in a field of wildflowers by the second film in my all-time favorite trilogy, Before Sunset. Wow, what a what sort of visual imagery she gives us <laughs> before we even see the pattern. Um, it has a slight 70s vibe, but with a clean modern lines. As a top, it can be worn loose or tucked in. The dress features inseam pockets and a drawstring, allowing you to easily adjust the fit and feel of the dress at any point in the day. Okay, so this is really like kind of a lot of patterns in one. Um, this is the front and back of the top, and then you can add on this little skirt with a tear, um, and it's really two patterns in one, right? Um, okay, so here are our lovely ladies. This is the top and maybe some kind of gauze. Then we've got the dress and maybe some kind of linen. Very beautiful, easy to wear. And then this is the top, I just love her smile. This is the top tucked in um, out of maybe some kind of cotton or something. Um, but you've got a really beautiful kind of gathered detail here. I also love kind of the shape, you know how the, art, the straps are kind of like curved in. That's a really nice detail too. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody has their arms down here. This does look a little bit big on her, but that could just be because it wasn't made exactly for her. Yeah, really pretty. I like that the drawstrings also are on the side. I think that for those of us that have maybe a little bit of extra weight in the center, <laughs> putting a little bow there and drawing attention to that, maybe not be maybe not be the, the most, you know, favorable thing to do. So having them on the side is really nice because you still get the, you know, functionality of it, but it's not distracting from the front of the dress. Okay, here's a close-up of the bodice. Yeah, it does look like this. Is that like a little mitered situation? Yeah. I think they executed it beautifully in the sample. I don't know how hard it is to do on your own. There's another close-up of it. Here is another version. They did a little raw hem here. That's really cute. 
one in a little print. Yeah, here's the back. This is like the first view of the back that we get. And then here's this view too. So my concern was with this um, little curvy strap situation, how they were going to be, how they were going to set into the, to the back band. It looks really nice and flat and straight and everything looks great. Cute little pattern. Um, 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 here's the size chart again. For this one, the full bust is most relevant and it looks like it goes from 31 and a half in a B cup up to 65 inches in a D cup. So again, very, very inclusive. Fabric is lightweight woven fabrics with some drape like cotton, lawn, double gauze, linen, silk. You'll need some interfacing, thread, and then some twill tape for your drawstring. And then this is the amount of interfacing you need. What is, oh, this is fabric requirements. And this is an advanced beginner to intermediate. Yeah, I'm assuming that these pieces, these two pieces are sewn together first and then you sew on the strap. That would make the most sense to me. And when you do it that way, I get, yeah, it seems like it would come together pretty easily. All right, now we're on to the La Brea tee. I think this is the one that I've seen the most on like social media. 14 bucks. The La Brea tea is named after La Brea Avenue in Los Angeles, a vintage shop where I found myself drawn to a rack of 80s throwback knit t-shirts with grown on sleeves and bound necklines. I remember this style as a child and I couldn't wait to get back home and sew one up for myself. Okay. Um, La Brea will fit your basic tea needs. It's got plenty of interesting details. La Brea was drafted for both woven and knit fabrics each resulting completely different look. Raw edges are neatly worked away with French seams and bias binding. Great details. Um, and then 18 different layered and nested sizes with B and D cup options. A uh, little additional tips on fitting. Okay. And here's our line drawing, not much to it. I think this is the knit version and this is the woven version. Uh, fabric for view A is light to midweight knits without additional lycra or elastane, like 100% cotton, linen, hemp, or modal knits. If you prefer to use a stretch knit, like a cotton and elastane blend, size down one or two sizes. Um, okay, and then view B, the woven version, midweight wovens like cotton, linen, rayon, silk, and double gauze. The drape of the fabric will change the look of the final garment. Lots of good information here on fabrics. Your notions, you just need coordinating thread, bias tape, and a ballpoint or stretch needle if you're sewing with the knit version, woven version, you can just use a universal needle. Uh, beginner or adventurous beginner, view B is suited most to beginners, the woven version. And then all of these little blog posts to help you, your fabric requirements for the both of the views are in there as well. Okay, let's take a look at these photos. You can see the top here. This is a maybe some kind of like linen or something that she dyed herself. Remember when like Shibori, like DIY Shibori was like the thing on Instagram? This might be a result of that. I love this detail on the knit version. That's what all of this is. That like extra little line there is like all of this little bias binding stuff. It is very, I'm getting strong, like when she says 80s throwback knit t-shirts, I'm getting that here. I love that this is a grown-on tee, like a grown-on sleeve tee, but with this detail, it makes it not seem so, like, I don't know, frumpy. Like, sometimes those grown-on sleeves can just be, like, sort of bleh, but this little detail of the little, like, almost like a tulip situation is just really, really sweet. I mean, what a cool outfit, right? And then here it is with a little neck band from the side. Yeah, good fit through the bust here. Straight side seam, really nice. And you can also get an idea of the length of it there too. I mean, it's going down almost to her full hip. And then because the knit version has a little band at the bottom, which is optional, you can kind of scrunch it up to your high hip a little bit. All right.
Okay, that's the La Brea tee. Next, we have the wrap dress, top and dress, Vondel. Although very Parisian inspired, wrap top Vondel is named after the Vondel Park in Amsterdam, a park where I have spent countless blissful hours biking, playing with my kids, and relaxing on picnic blankets. It is feminine, easy to wear, true wrap with a deep V and long waist tie to close. Features a one-piece shoulder yoke. That's cool. With a curved center back and front. Curved, a, I'm sorry, a cur yeah, curved center back and front. I'm not sure what that means. Um, and back gathers for shaping. Does she mean the, I guess the yoke. We're still talking about the yoke. Okay. Okay, yeah, with three sleeve length options, cuff, half, and seven eighths sleeve, as well as three lengths, top, short dress, and midi dress, you can make a different Vondel for every occasion. This pattern includes French seams, the burrito method, which we love, and other creative techniques to achieve a beautiful, clean finish. Thanks to detailed instructions, the perfect pattern to learn French seams or to level up your sewing game. Okay, so this is drafted for a B cup only. And we might only have sizes one through 10. Yeah, so it is only half of the size chart that we have been looking at before, which means a full bust of 30 to 44 inches and then a full hip of 34 to 48. So technically this doesn't even fit me. So great to see that she has kind of extended her size range fully to, I mean, like I said before, very, very extensive. Um, and hopefully she's going back and doing some of these older patterns too. Um, okay, so midway to woven fabric with drapes such as double gauze, crepe, silk, tinsel, rayon, linen, shirting, and wall. Again, we talked about fabric a little bit in the beginning in the about section. She's always only going to um, suggest fabrics that are natural, not man-made, you know, things like that. So that's why we're seeing some of these repeat so often. Um, cottons and gauze and rayons and uh, linen for sure. Okay. Um, notions are minimal. You do need a sew-on snap for like the, I guess the left side or whatever, the inside of it opposite from the tie. And she's calling this intermediate. And then again, we have four different um, blog posts related to this pattern. Something cool she did here was put little, like, I guess, like leather beads on her tassel. I love that detail. Something simple we can all incorporate. And then, yeah, we've got the yoke that she's talking about is all in one. So from front to back, it's one piece. There's no seam here. Um, it does extend to the end of your arm, the end of your shoulder, and then you've got a small sleeve head because of that. Because it's not cut in at all, um, you don't need a lot of, like, gathering. You don't need a lot of, like, you know, the shaping in this little area to create that ball for the ball of your shoulder. Um, and then this is the knee length. Maybe some kind of like scoopy hem. Yeah, a like little scoopy hem here. I love that. Here is another version. Sleeveless. Well, what did she call it? Cuff. Yeah, so it still is a sleeve and it still extends to the edge of your shoulder. This is not technically sleeveless. I think that the height of the sleeve um, opening is really good. Um... Oh, maybe the sew on snap goes here and it ties on the inside. Here's another view of that uh, all in one shoulder, all in one yoke. Here it is as a top. And then more photos of the dress. Here's the back. So again, all one piece yoke. And then this is the curved center back that she was referring to. You can get a good view of just how wide the shoulder goes all the way to the end of your shoulder. And then it's like not even a sleeve cap. It's just kind of sort of sewn in right there on the edge. And then the top again. Okay. Cute, simple little wrap with, with really nice details. 
Okay, this is the, oh lord, boat neck Onagata? Named after the sparsely populated and northernmost of the British Virgin Islands. I've never heard of the Onagata Island. Am I saying that wrong? It's a semi-fitted, super basic tee with an unconventional feminine touch. View A features a wider neckline displaying a little extra shoulder. The raw edge allows the fabric to roll over nonchalantly and also very easy to sew because you aren't sewing. <laughs> um, exposing the inside of the fabric and creating a little cowl neckline depending on the, I think this is supposed to say drape of the fabric. View B is a true everyday boat neck with mini box pleats. Depending on your choice of fabric, this universally flattering, simple pattern can take you from the gym to the opera. And it's sure to become an absolute favorite in any casual wardrobe. I don't know about the opera, but I mean, maybe. And again, this is the, the more standard sizing, one to 10 only. Um, okay. So is this, where's the fabric information? Oh, lightweight to medium weight knits with some drape, such as jersey, bamboo, rayon jersey, interlock, t-shirt weight, merino, French terry, lightweight sweatshirting, and 25 to 100% stretch. Fabric requirements are based on a size 10. Okay. Okay. All right, so here she is. This is the view A. Um, and there is like a bit, like, you know, on baby onesies, how there's that little like crossover. That's sort of what's happening there. So it's not a traditional straight shoulder. And again, you've got your arm size set in really close to the edge of the body, an uh, elbow cuff and a cuff band down here cut on the bias. Both of those are, um, you can tell that the sleeve is. I don't know the technical term, but you can tell that the sleeve is the sleeve cap is not super bell shaped because normally you'd have a stripe that goes like this and then this the sleeve stripe would kind of take off at an angle. This is almost straight all the way across. So pretty flat um, sleeve head there, I would imagine. There's the back. Kind of a lot of gathering here because the band is being kind of pulled up by the curves of her body there's a cute picture of the like neckline see how it rolls and i think she used a french terry too so that is what is exposed that's really cute detail i can see that like in a gap shirt or something you know here is it like flat laid are we going to get any pictures of the other one? Oh, this is the other one. Okay, cool. So this is the little box pleats that she talked about. It has an actual neck band and a little bit, I mean, she says one is really wide and one is narrow, but they're kind of the same to me. Um, same with the stripes. This one's also omitting the band, so you can see it kind of sits a little bit more relaxed on her lower bodice. There's the neck band there. Oh, here she is on the island having her idyllic little picnic. What a life, right? Jeez. I mean, if the, sewing this and wearing this pattern gets me all this, <laughs> yes, please. Oh, gosh. Okay. Now we've got the Del P, ballet top Del P dress. I think I'm going to love this. Ballet top Del Delpy is inspired in equal parts by Julie Delpy's character Celine in the film Before Sunrise, which she has mentioned before. Maybe as we're sewing her patterns, the half moon patterns, we should all be watching these films. Um, that would be a fun little, all like an immersive experience, right? <laughs> um, okay, and the ballet leotards I wore as a child, a simple basic with flattering touch of elegance ballet top or dress delphi will become a versatile staple in your capsule wardrobe perfect on a warm summer day or as a light layering piece under a cashmere cardigan on cooler days delphi is easy to wear camisole top that is fitted in the bust and looser around the waist and hips as a dress it loosely grazes over your hips and has a unique rounded corner and slit it has a bust gather and thin straps with three options of back views including scoop 
straight, and cross straps, allowing you to customize your topper dress to fit your own personal style. So from the waist up, fully getting ballet leotard vibes, right? It's this sort of like sweetheart situation, plus the little gathers here and the little thin straps, so cute. And then from here down is the combination that she's referring to. But look how cool this is. So unique, right? Like one, one side seam is this little curved edge and the other side seam is straight. And then here are our three backs. All right, sizes one through 10. Again, lightweight woven, such as double gauze, cotton lawn, rayon, or linen. Also be lovely in a satin, silk, or velvet, especially if you were able to cut it on the cross grain. Oh my gosh. Uh, or on the bias. The Delphi pattern can easily be adopted to knits by simply dropping a full or partial size depending upon the stretch content. Okay, lots of tutorials and stuff. She's got a sew along. She's got a hack for bias bound seams. Okay, um, a partial button placket along the center front. Some kind of jazzy hack. Um, this is how she made it into a knit dress. So yeah, lots of information about this one. So here it is. Pretty cool, right? I mean, obviously you could mimic the scoop on both sides, but I don't know. I just think it's kind of fun how it's like got only one pocket, you know, it's unique. Here's the top. I mean, that's beautiful. That looks genuinely stunning. Here's the scoop back. Maybe a little too tight on the hips here, which is why we're getting all of this bunching. So cute. Oh, there's also a little bust start here, which I missed in the line drawing, but it's definitely right there. And then here's her working on the flat lay. That's a fun photo. This is also it from the inside. No, she just left exposed serger. Um, finish. That's cool. Here's the top. I do like it with the little tie belt. Scoop back again. All right, that's it. That's all the photos we're going to get. So I don't know. This top is stunning. Really, really beautiful. All right, that is the Delphi. Next, we have super basic underpants, which I'm going to skip. I don't know a lot about lingerie. Um, I just don't know how to review it, but she has them here. <laughs> We've got the midi skirt Roma, which has a similar design detail as the dress we just looked at with the one scoop. Um, elastic waist, right? Not a lot to this. Modern minimalist pencil skirt, okay? Okay. It has sizes one through 10 again, and you're gonna use your lightweight wovens like she has referred to, light to medium weight wovens, like she's referred to in almost every other woven pattern. Um, yeah, and super deep um, elastic, which I really like. Not a lot of photos on this one either, but she did all exposed serger stuff, which is pretty cool, which I think is what this is illustrating. Um, I don't, I guess the only difference between B and A is that A is top stitch and B is not. I don't know. I can't really tell. She doesn't go through each one of the views like she has in the past. Okay. Now we've got the summer jumpsuit. This one's called tofu. Um, summer jumpsuit tofu is ideal for long, warm summer days, whether you're heading to the beach or park with the kids, running around town or on a date with someone special, this jumpsuit will work with you and your lifestyle all day long. Loose fitting pull on short jumpsuit or romper or play suit featuring elastic back and waistband, adjustable, removable straps, a knotted or bow tie belt and pockets. I named it after Stunning Tofu Mozambique, one of my favorite places on the planet where my family and I created dear memories. Man, this girl gets around. World traveler. Um, okay, so you've got your little band that goes into elastic in the back, and then you have strap options of either straight straps, crisscross them in the back, and then you've got belt carriers for this, but it is a drop waist. This is all sitting at the high hip. Little pockets 
And this looks like to be an itty bitty little inseam. We'll see how that transfers to the actual pattern. Sizes one through 10 again, um, mid to lightweight woven, such as tinsel twill, broadcloth, chambray, linen, seersucker, shirting, um, will work best with the summer jumpsuit. Element of drape as an elegant touch and a touch of stretch may add additional comfort, but is not required. Okay. Oh, and the notions, wide braided elastic, wide non-roll elastic, one for the waistband, one for the back. Six buttons, that is to make the straps uh, removable, which I wouldn't make mine removable. <laughs> I would make mine permanent, but fusible interfacing and coordinating thread as well. All right, so this is it. It's kind of like a bandeau. You remember, you remember those from like the early 2000s? Where it's kind of like ruched through here, but this is staying up somehow, so I'm not sure how that is being achieved. Here's the back with the elastic back, your big wide belt carriers. That is what her like pattern covers look like. That's really pretty. More of her crawling on the rocks. Here's her having some tea. Oh, so Part of the elastic wraps around to the front. Is that what I'm seeing? Something is creating this little situation. And then this actually genuinely curves up and somehow stays in place. Maybe there's elastic in here in this part too. I don't, I don't know how this is kind of happening, but it is. And you can see the drop waist sitting at her high hip. And the inseam looks to be about, I don't know, two inches maybe. The proportions are interesting. This is very long and this is very short. Um, so I don't know, does it make you look taller? Does it make you look shorter? We need like a full view from the front in order to tell, which I don't think we're gonna get. Um, there it is, after she's come off the rocks and just kind of casually thrown it on the floor next to her sunglasses and magazine. <laughs> oh, but here's the inseam for sure, like two inches. Itty bitty inseam. And then here she is looking over the rocks again. So yeah, drop waists are not for me. Um, neither is strapless. <laughs> so I don't know that I would pick this one up, but looks good on her. Here is a bikini pattern. Again, we're going to skip over this just simply because I don't know how to review bikinis. I don't know how they're supposed to fit. I don't know what's good about them and what's not. Like I've never made my own swimsuit. So then we have the super basic tank top. You can get this for free somehow. Um, oh, here we go <laughs> for email subscribers. So I think at the bottom, like the foot, it, the footer of her thing. Yeah. You can put your info in here and get this for free, but it is just a super basic tank. Um, all seasons, climates, belongs in every handmade wardrobe, striped or spotted version to wear with your gathered skirts, cutoffs in the summer, a solid version to wear under sweaters in the winter, nice lightweight tighter knit, and wear it as an undershirt for bra free days, and then use the scraps to make matching underpants. It is only the size one through 10. I think all of these toward the end here are gonna be that. But you can see here, just, um, yeah, super basic tank. It does look to be finished by bands. A little band maybe but these little free patterns even though they're super basic are a great way to determine if you like her finishing if you like her instructions if you like you know just the way she does things this is a bundle of that knit boat neck top the ballet dress and the scoopy skirt and then <clears throat> we have the Oh, it looks like a fabric kit and pattern with some French terry. So if you didn't want to source your own fabric for the Anagata boat neck <clears throat> sweater, it looks like you can choose from all these colors. That's really cool. Yeah, I love a good kit. Oh, here's some more. Here are the colors, right? That's fun. Love that mushroom color. Yeah, that's a great way to take all the guesswork out of everything. You don't need to worry about sourcing anything. She's got your thread and your needle and your um, fabric and pattern. And then this is the bikini and the romper bundle. 
So those are some fun, like if you're going on vacation, you could just get that one and make those two things. So that's Half Moon Atelier. What do we think? Um, I think she really lived up to the idea of sort of the basic buildable wardrobe. Very happy to see her most recent patterns being as inclusive as they are. I really do hope that she will retroactively go back to some of these. I'd love to make this ballet top, for example, um, or the dress. Um, even the wrap dress, I think, is really stunning. So would love to know your thoughts on this collection. If you've ever sewn one of their patterns before, I love hearing from you as well because, you know, you have experienced it through and through. So please leave a comment to let us know how that went, what you thought, you know, all those good things. But that is going to do it for me today. I have last week's First Impression Friday linked here in the end slate. So click on that if you want to have a little binge stash. Otherwise, I'll see you all very soon. Bye.